Hi there, Maureen from Color Me Positive PLR. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is a tutorial I've been promising about coloring in your line art images. Uh, I'm using one of the bonus elephants uh, from my pack for Niranjan's elephant uh, coloring book kit. Now, um, I get a lot of questions about doing this. A lot of people say, well, can't you just go in and use the... Um, paint bucket over here right say I want to use the color blue and then just click in different areas you can do that but thing is once you do you can't really edit this if you want to add a shadow or um, or anything plus you might get artifacts around this because it's it doesn't quite fill in you could keep clicking and see how it takes away the black line art so this is not something unless you're just doing a quick thing like that doesn't matter I'm just gonna put this back to where it was so if you want to do a more professional job of it and you want to add shadows or different things to the colors what you need to do is create different layers for each part that you're going to color in so what I first do is you pull up the JPEG file, you come over here, click on the lock to unlock the background so it makes it a layer. Then come over to your magic wand tool, right? And we're going to get rid of all the white in, in the image. So for your magic wand tool, what you want to do is click off of contiguous. So this will select all the white in your image because you've clicked on the white background then just hit delete okay and you can just click over here to get rid of the marching ants then I'm gonna create three layers I'll move the elephant the line art on top because that's where you want it then on the bottom layer I'm gonna fill it with white so we can see what we're doing all right then come on back up to your elephant layer and what you want to do is again select the magic wand tool and make sure you click on contiguous again because you're going to want to select different areas and not just one color part right so let's see let's color in the elephant first right so I'm going to click on shift hold down the uh, shift key and click all the areas that I want to be gray say for the elephant you just hold down the shift key and keep clicking okay then you're going, going to want to go up to select modify and expand okay so I usually expand by two pixels, three pixels, depending on how thick the, the uh, line art is. So you're going to expand it by two pixels because when you fill it in now and you go to the bottom layer underneath this, so you're going to go to layer two, right, or whatever layer you've created, you can now fill it and the actual color will be underneath the line art. So you're not going to get any kind of artifacts so just choose a color I'm gonna do gray I'll go about there and what you can do now to fill it you don't need to go over to your paint bucket although you can do that what you're gonna do is hold down the alt key and hit backspace and that will fill the whole area that you've selected with the with the color of your choice right so that's alt and backspace to do that so now and you can just click outside that if you want to get rid of the marching ants now what you have is three layers see if we get rid of that that's what you just filled in okay underneath so when you're on this layer you can now actually do things with it to create different shadows and, and different things. Um, one of the ways you can add shadows or darken or lighten is you can come over to this tool over here, 
Okay, it's like a little hand or if it's a dodge tool, um, right? That'll lighten things. The burn tool will darken things. So say I want a darker shadow around all of this. What you want to do for that is create another layer, okay? Go on to your elephant and then just click down here to add a new layer. And then you're going to fill that layer with a gray, a uh, mid-gray. So you would do the RGB would be 128 all through. 128 and 128. Okay. Now just fill that layer. Go to your paint bucket tool. Fill it. And that's going to cover everything. What you want to do is come up here and go to soft light and that gets rid of it okay now to add the shadows come over here I'm gonna use the burn tool and I'm going to use about that size brush right uh, also I think what I'll do is I'll select the areas because this way um, you're only gonna stay on the area so I'm just gonna click on the tool with my color on I uh, click on the layer with my color on it and select inverse and that'll create my color then what I want to do is come back up to that gray select my burn tool and then just watch what happens when you color over it See how it's darkening up? So you're adding different shadows by doing this. And it'll add some depth, okay, to your, your image. I'm just going to do this so you can see it more. See here? Now, if you want to do the opposite, and lighten somewhere go to the dodge tool and then you can do that see how it takes away the shadow right so this is a longer way of doing it and depends on what you want to do with your image so an easier way to get shadows and lightness throughout your image is to use um, the styles in here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this layer just click on the trash can that's gone so see how everything's gone here now too so it's if you're gonna be doing that using dodge tool make sure you use that layer with the gray on it so that if you do make a mistake or you want to get rid of it you're not actually working on this and have to start all over you'll just have to delete that or you know use it whatever way you want okay so I'm gonna come back to the color layer I just created layer 2 and I'm gonna double click on it and that's gonna bring up your layer style panel okay now what you can do here is go to inner shadow right and see how it adds that kind of shadowy effect around the outside and you can change that direction as well here it has it as overlay you can actually do that as well make it normal that makes it darker and then you can work on the choke which kind of pulls it away or makes it bigger and the size of it depending what you want to do with that right you can use overlay you can use soft light, hard light, depending what you want. So just play around with it. Normally I'll use soft light depending on how dark I want to go or how big I want to go. Right? So here's like an effect that kind of give you dark and light throughout. I'm going to leave it there. And then you can use inner glow. See how that lightens it up? in spaces and I like that look so I'm gonna leave it like that uh, for that okay I'm just gonna click OK 
So basically, you just do that with every part that you want to color. So let's do it again. I'm going to color the hat and the sleeper. So I'm going to come back up to the elephant and I'm going to choose where I want this to go and I'm going to click on sh hold shift and click here as well as here because I want these areas to be the same color. Then I'm going to come up to select, modify, expand by two pixels and then I'm going to come below the elephant and I'm going to create a new layer because I'm going to put in a different color and I might not want it to use the same style as I did for the gray. So I'm just going to click down here, create a new layer. Okay. So in that selection now, I'm going to choose a color like blue. Let's do that. And then make sure you're on that layer, that new layer. Then I'm going to click on Alt, Backspace, and fill it with that color. Now you can come up to select, deselect if you want to deselect it. And then I'm going to come over here and double click on that and maybe add some effects to that as well. So let's try the inner shadow again and the inner glow. And I like that. That looks nice, this part. Um, let's see. Inner shadow. Thing might be a little bit too big. So let's take that down a notch. There we go. Now you can also, you can play around here as well. So you want a color overlay. See, it'll change the color for you. Right, which is nice. That's a nice soft kind of pastel blue if you use that. The normal mode. Um, you can use a gradient if you like too. And because of the color you have in it, see how that works? It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, the blend mode is multiply. Now, if you use normal, it's going to give you that. You know, so play again. Just play around. See what you like. Uh, that's part of the fun. Uh, sometimes a gradient can add a lot more kind of variations. See, depending on what you use. Now you've got the hat darker and the sleeper a little bit lighter. Uh, you know, play around with whatever gradients you have. And... I like it just the way it was without a gradient, right? You can even add a pattern layer if you like. Uh, if you have a lot of patterns, I don't, but, you know, see, that'll add dots, spirals, kind of takes the color away, so you might have to add some color back in, right? So it's just whatever you feel would look good for you and I like this so I'm just gonna leave it like that and pretty much that's it you just go through the whole thing and you can create whatever you like now the reason to have it on different layers is if I ever want and I save the PSD files for this and if I ever want to do a whole bunch of these uh, but in different colors. So say now it's blue, but I want one for a girl. So I just come back to the PSD file and say I want to, actually, let's make it pink the other way. So I'll come back here. I'm gonna hit my select magic wand tool, click outside, I'm on the layer with the blue on it. Now select inverse, right? So now I've got that selected, and I want to make it pink now because maybe I'm making a, a baby book for a girl, right? So let's make it pink. So I'm going to hit Alt, Backspace, and now I have a pink. So that just makes it easy to create different colors, and this has the same effects as the other one did. So it'll keep the effects for you. If you want to change them, just double click on the layer and go back in and just change it. Now I might want a bigger shadow here. And there we go. So if if you did this all on one layer, you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd have to go in and start all over again by selecting and and so on and so forth. 
So this makes it pretty easy to do um, if you want to color in all the different elements and use different layers to get different effects okay for your images so I hope this helps and I hope my voice wasn't too bad I'm still kind of coughing a little bit and stuff so I made it through uh, and oh if you do want to save it after to use on your book covers what you want to do is go to layer flatten image then come over to your magic eraser tool just click on the background and that'll get rid of it and you want to get rid of all the extra space go to select click on the background inverse and crop it so now you can take this image and save it as a PNG file with transparency and that way you can use it on your book covers or wherever else you like alright if you have any questions just hit me up in the Facebook group or send me an email